as I mentioned, that deficiency is not always linked to low intake of B12. So basically meaning eating animal products because that's where B12 is mainly found. But that is the most common reason for B12 deficiency. So the RDA or the recommended dietary allowance for B12 is 2.4 micrograms. And it, it's pretty easy to get from diet. But when you look at the charts of like, this food has X amount of B12, we need to remember that this, uh, first of all, the charts are usually not taking into consideration the absorption of B12. And similarly, the RDA is accounting for typical absorption rates. But when it comes to vitamin B12, it's more complex than that. So here's what I mean. It's been studied that the most bioavailable forms of vitamin B12 is fish, red meat, and chicken meat. So for example, in red meat, the B12 is in three different biologically active forms, mainly adenosylcobalamin and methylcobalamin. But then the content of vitamin B12 varies between cut. So the highest content is in the top blade steak or flat iron steak. That's about 1.5 micrograms per 100 grams, whereas the lowest content is in the top round steak, about 0.7 micrograms of 100 grams. And from this amount, about 40 to 90% is absorbed. And this depends on different kind of factors like how it's cooked, how it's stored, how you got absorbs it, and so on. So many sources say that eggs are a great source of vitamin B12, and just two eggs would fill the daily need of vitamin B12. But only about 9% of this vitamin B12 is absorbed in the body. So relying on X for vitamin B12 is not necessarily the best strategy. The other thing to consider is the top absorption rate, which is about 1.5 to 2 micrograms per meal. So even if you ate tons and tons of meat, if you get more vitamin B12 than 1.5 to 2 micrograms, you're not absorbing more than that. Therefore, it's probably more effective to get vitamin B12, for example, from two or three meals per day. The next thing is some sort of gut disorder or gut inflammation. So vitamin B12 is absorbed to the body through small intestine, ileum. And if you have gut-related inflammation, like IBS or gastritis or pernicious anemia or even parasite, then this can reduce the absorption of vitamin B12. Similarly, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO can decrease the absorption because the bacteria ends up consuming B12 before it gets absorbed into the body. There's also something called functional deficiency, which means that there is lack of B12 activity in the cells because there is lack of cofactors. So if you are, for example, uh, deficient in B6 and B9, then there can still be accumulation of homocysteine and MMA because the B12 is not effectively doing its job. So how do we measure vitamin B12 levels? So there are three important lab tests which last functional markers to consider. The first is to measure holotranscobalamin, which is active B12. So this measures the metabolically active portion of B12 in opposed to total serum B12. The second lab test would be homocysteine levels, which should be elevated if your vitamin B12 is not doing its job or you are deficient. And the third one is methylmalonic acid. So what to do if you have B12 deficiency? So first one would be to take care of your gut health, to make sure that there is no gut inflammation because the absorption of vitamin B12 happens there. The second thing is to use nutritional strategies to correct this deficiency. Mainly, it usually means increasing the intake of vitamin B12 sources, which are usually fish meat or chicken meat. Some products are also fortified with vitamin B12, but they are mostly like breakfast cereals and things that I wouldn't normally recommend to add on for the diet for B12 intake. Then, of course, for anyone who does not eat meat, a supplement is an option. So there are certain supplements that have better absorption. Those supplements that contain the active B12 form, like methylcobalamin, in opposed to cyanocobalamin. There are also sublingual supplements that dissolve under the tongue, so they bypass the digestive system altogether. And then there are also supplements that are liposomal form. I like this brand called Actinovo. It's like 
B12 in uh, glycerol. So it's actually super sweet. Um, but if you like that, I kind of like it. It's kind of like dessert. Um, then you can use that one. This is not sponsored. I just kind of like the brand. They have a variety of, of liposomal supplements that I've tried. So this was just a small reminder of how important all B vitamins are for mental health and nervous system control and nervous system health. Let me know in the comments if you have experienced vitamin B12 deficiency and did you notice maybe some sort of dip in con cognition or mood. It's actually quite interesting to know. And also if you have any other questions or comments, please post them below and watch my other videos too. And I hope to see you in the next video.